Hey, what's up you guys? It's Premier Gal here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Here on this channel, I make Premiere Pro tutorials on video editing as well as After Effects tutorials. And I also produce just general video tips and tricks to make you a better video producer. But I like to think of Premiere Pro as my hub, right? And off of that hub, I have spokes of all the different software I use to achieve my final edit. So I use Photoshop, Illustrator, Audition, a whole bunch of different Adobe software to achieve my final edit. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to restore an old photograph in Photoshop and also bring it to life by colorizing it. So this would be a great technique to use if you're producing a documentary and you have some older photographs that you wanna to bring to life. After you colorize it, you can do the before and after with like a parallax effect. And it's a lot cooler than just using the standard Ken Burns effect to add motion to still photographs. So I have this photo here of my grandpa from 1950 on his wedding day, and I'm gonna show you how to restore it and then colorize it. So let's go ahead and jump into Photoshop and I'm gonna give you the play-by-play. Okay, hey you guys, so I have the image here of my grandpa inside of Photoshop CC 2017, and I have the first layer here of the original image called original. And what I'm going to do is copy that and hit Command J to copy it. And I'm just gonna call this, by double clicking, I'm gonna label that restore because we're going to restore the image here and get rid of all of these scratches and blemishes that are on the image from just being old. I mean, this was from 1950, right? So we're going to use a combination of the patch tool here as well as the clone tool to get rid of some of the blemishes here. So the first step that I wanna do is just crop the image to get rid of some of the border issues and we can just use the clone tool to then fix some of the leftover um, elements. So let's just crop first of all and let's just select this area here just to get rid of some of that torn. Let's fix that. And then let's hit the check mark. So now we have the cropped image and there's still areas that we need to fix. Uh, let's start in this upper right hand corner here. Let's just zoom in here for a second. Use H for the hand tool to move it in place. So we're going to use the patch tool to fix this. Go ahead and select the patch tool and then we're just gonna draw a lasso around this area. And then come back and then close it off. And then what we have to do is then click and drag this area down. And what it's going to do is fill the area that we just got rid of with the with the selected area just below. Isn't that pretty cool? So then what we can do is just use the clone tool to fix that. So go ahead and select out of the selection area here. And then we can use the clone tool. If you guys have never used the clone tool before, it's generally better to increase the, the brush size so it's less noticeable. And also keep the opacity a little bit lower too for work like this around 50%. It's okay to go above but let's increase the brush size to about 150 is probably good for this. So what we're going to do is hit Alt and click to copy this region, and then we're just gonna click over this area to fix it up. See, it's looking a little bit better. And now we can clone um, over top this part as well. Just click until it disappears. So that corner's done. Um, I'm going to do the exact same method here, just sort of cleaning this up. So I'm just going to fast forward through this bit as I clone. So then this area down here gets a little tricky because of the shaded lightness on the left and the darkness on the right. So what I can do is just quickly reduce the size of the brush really quickly and fix just these blemishes here. But I don't wanna clone all of this because it's gonna look kind of funky to sort of have to copy and it's a lot of work to have to copy the different tones. So what I'm going to do is use the patch tool here and actually draw a lasso around this entire area, like so. And then I'm just going to click and move it over 
to copy the area to the right. And then that's fixed. So if you click over, it looks pretty good. And then down here, we have another issue. We can do the exact same thing, but first let's use the clone tool really quickly. Let's increase the brush size just a tad. And let's go ahead and alt click that area and let's just get rid of this crease here by cloning that. That looks pretty good. Great. And now let's just get rid of this area here using the patch tool. Let's just go ahead and lasso around that area like so. And then let's click and move that over like so. And now that's fixed. And just to finish this off here, I'm just going to use the clone tool again, alt option, click, and then just click and cover up and now let me just show you what it looked like before and now after. So there's still a few more blemishes I'm just gonna clean up. So I'm just gonna fast forward using the clone tool to do that. All right, so that's looking pretty good here. So now if I click the eye off on the restore layer, you can see what it looked like before. If I click it back on, you can see that it's nice and cleaned up now. The last bit of restoring that we have to do is actually create a smart filter to remove any last minute dust or scratches from the image. So to do that, you first have to right click on the restore layer and convert to smart object. And then up to filter, select noise, dust and scratches. And here you can indicate how big you want the radius of the dust to be removed. Keeping it around one and two is safe, otherwise you'll get some distortion. And threshold, we can keep that at 30. Just hit okay and that'll get rid of any dust or scratches um, in a radius of around two. So now that that is done, now we need to neutralize the color tones. So to do that, first you need to go down to adjustment layer and select black and white. And now the colors are neutralized in black and white. Now we need to add some contrast between the white and the blacks in the image. So let's add a levels adjustment layer. And then using this graph here for levels, you're gonna pull in the blacks to make it a bit darker and pull in the whites like so to have some contrast. So that's looking a lot better. Now you can see the lines on the edges a lot better here. Great. So the next step is to select a color mode. We're going to select it to CMYK, also SMIC, as some people say, because and you're after you select it, you're going to select merge and it's going to make one layer. The reason why we change it to CMYK is because not only is it better for printing, but it blends better when we start adding the color. So now we're set to begin adding color to this image. So the way that we do that is we actually create a solid color adjustment layer for each color that we're going to paint onto my grandfather here. So we need a skin color, we need an eye color, a hair color, tuxedo color. Let's see what else, um, this rest probably like a dark brown color and the background, which I don't know the original color, but I'm gonna guess it was probably a gray. Um, so let's start painting. So to do that, you're going to select this adjustment layer here and select solid color. And here we just are gonna guess on a skin tone. So it'll be a lot darker because we're gonna apply a soft light blend mode. So let's do about that. And now we're going to change the blend mode to soft light. And then you're going to select this mask here and hit Command I to convert it to black. And this will enable us to start painting in the color, which will appear as a mask in this box. So make sure that white is selected because this enables you to paint and click on the brush tool or hit B. And then we can zoom in, hit Z to zoom in and for B back to brush, we can adjust the brush size to be a bit bigger. And now I can just start painting in that color like so. And notice the overexposed area here on his forehead. That is not gonna get any color just because it's overexposed, but that's okay. 
and it's just gonna work out to be, seem more natural because in the original image, it's also blown out. So then you just go ahead and paint here. I'm just going to fast forward as I finish his face. All right, so his face skin is starting to look a bit better. You can always change the color by going back over here, clicking on the color and adjusting it until you feel like you get the right skin tone. Again, we can go back in and add some blush to it as a final touch to really get that sort of warm skin color. So this can be a feel a little bit more, you know, less alive um, at first because we can add more color as a different layer later on. But this is pretty good for now. So, you know, all we have to do now is just continue to carry on and create a new solid layer like we did before. Um, I still have to paint in his hands, but let's just go ahead and make a new, um, first let's go ahead and rename this to skin color. And now let's go ahead and make a new solid for, let's say his eyes, a new solid color. Let's make the eyes blue because he had blue eyes like so. And we're gonna change this to soft light like before, and then click on the white mask and hit Command I on a Mac. It's command, it's Control I on a PC. And let's rename this eyes. And I'm going to create a new solid color for his tuxedo, which will be black. Change it to soft light. Command I. And so I'm just gonna fast forward as I create all the different layers here. All right, so I have a layer for pretty much every color now from background, skin color, eyes, black tuxedo, black tuxedo, all the way up to lips and gums. And what I'm going to do is just select the color that I wanna start using and start painting. So I'm just gonna do a time lapse as I select the color. Remember, you have to select this bit, the mask part, to begin painting. And then you just have to hit B for brush, control click to adjust the size and to, to the size that you want and then begin painting. So let's just go ahead and start painting his hands here. So I'm just adding some blush to his skin to make it seem more natural here. And again, it's set at a 35% opacity. If I increase that, it's gonna look like too much, right? So I'm just gonna set that at around 40 and it looks perfect. So the blush makes it just seem more natural. All right, on to doing the eyes and other parts of the body. Just gonna do a time lapse here of this. If you make any mistakes at all, you can always switch these colors. So now it's a black color and then you can erase what you've done. So I'm just gonna switch, so I'm going to switch back to white to begin painting again. So that's a really nifty tip. And I'm just changing the color of the background so it's easier for me to see what I'm painting in. I'm not actually gonna keep it blue. So now we can change the background color to anything that we like. Let's change it back to maybe this darker gray color. Hit OK. And now it's time to fill in his tuxedo color. Let's go ahead and click that and hit B for brush. Let's make it a bit bigger. And let's begin coloring that in. All right, it's almost done here. We're just gonna fill in this armrest here below, and then we may be able to do a before and after. Let's go ahead and zoom in to this armrest, select the color here. We may have to change the color later on, and then we have to do the ring and some touch-ups. So let's just zoom in here, 
select the mask and let's make the brush bigger and let's begin to color this armrest kind of darker brown color. zoom out here. This is looking pretty good. I like it. And um, because there are some blotchy areas, that's just from the original image, some of the damage. I mean, we can clean that up. And I want to make this pant leg just a little bit darker. So what I'm going to do is rather than create a new solid color, I'm going to create a new layer. Bring this up to the top here. And on this layer, I'm just going to paint black. So I'm going to switch back to black here, make the brush a little bit less hardness, increase the size a bit, let's say about there. Let's make opacity around 61. And then I can just paint black over this area so it's not as white and it looks more natural. And so this is pretty much done here. I think I probably just want to add a bit more color to his skin. So I may click on that color and probably darken it up a bit. Actually lighten it up a bit just to bring more color in. Maybe bring it down. That looks a bit better. That way he doesn't look so pale. And so to pull up a side by side here of what it looked like before and after, let me just pull this out can see here on the left the damage is there it's sepia tone and on the right it's colored and restored so thanks so much for watching you guys if this video helped you out give it a thumbs up and if you have any other questions please don't be shy and leave a comment below uh, please be sure to subscribe to this channel because i make new video production tutorials every week often they're requested by you so if you go to premiergal.com tutorials you can leave a video production tutorial request there and also be sure to hit that notification bell um, which is just located below next to the subscribe button so you stay notified when i release new content also if you guys want to help me out you can go to patreon.com premier gal and leave me a tip there and be sure to check out all my video editing templates at premiergal.com store thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you all very soon bye